this is, I guess, second chance shelf or second, second chance kid shelf. Yeah, slash grown up shelf. Because May's here. Um, but I hope you're enjoying the 24 hour gaming marathon. But we wanted to talk about our favorite games. So May is gonna, this is her first time ever thinking about what her top 10 favorite games are. I'm also gonna talk about my top 10 favorite games. I'll give you a little thought about what I think about May's picks. May will give me a little thought about what she, because she's never played most of mine, but uh, about what they might look like. All right, so let's get started. Action. No, Dad! My number 10 game is Istanbul uh, by Rudyard Dorn and Pegasus Spiel. Um, Istanbul is a really cool, um, it has a similar like, kind of almost Mancala uh, mechanism where you're moving the pieces across the board uh, to do different actions across the board and then you have to, you know, reset and pull all your pieces back together and then you can keep marching around the board. I play this one on my phone a lot um, while I'm putting the kids to bed or something. I think May's probably seen me do that. Um, we've only played it a couple times in person, but I played a lot on the app. And I really love Istanbul. It feels like such a puzzle when you're moving around the um, moving around the board to try to get the rubies first. So, May, what do you think? Do you think it looks good? Does it look yeah. boring? Or um, maybe. Maybe fun. Yeah. Or maybe maybe boring. Yeah, maybe maybe. It's not super inspiring on the cover, but. I don't know. Maybe someday May I'll like it. May, what was your number 10? Uh, my number 10 was Dog Rally. Dog Rally. And this is by Haba because it's in the big yellow box. Um, and what is what is special about Dog Rally that you like? Um, I like it getting the little pieces mm -hmm. like you can see on the cover here. Yep. So Dog Rally is in the Active Kids line that Haba does. So you have to be active and playing in it. So in it you have a, almost looks like a dog toy. It's like a toilet paper tube and it has a hole in it and you put all these little wooden chips in it and as you roll it across the floor you need to grab the colors as they fall out of the color you need right yeah yeah so we play it at our house may's little sister likes it and they like to pretend to be dogs and it's fun right <laughs> perfect all right that's our number tens number nine. Number nine. all right for number nine, I am choosing the Unlock series. So I kind of see this as kind of a gaming system. I don't see these as individual games because they all play very similarly. So I'm going to choose Unlock games as mine. This is the um, Night of the Boogeyman. To be honest, this is not one that I particularly cared for, but I like the series a whole lot. This is just one that I have handy. Um, the Unlock games are really cool. They are an escape room game only with cards. And then you use your phone um, or an app to be able to interact with the game as well. You've seen mom and I play these pretty frequently. We yes. play these a lot at night. We've played almost all of them up until this point. They're just really easy to pull out. They take about an hour or two if you are doing it right. Um, but we love the unlock games. I used to like the exit games more, but at this point I get more excited when the unlock games come out because the themes are a little bit more unusual and interesting. So that's the unlock games by Space Cowboys. May, what's your number nine? My number nine is Once Upon a Castle. Once Upon a Castle. And in this game, what are you doing? You're trying to f oh, finish your castle that you're mm -hmm. drawing in this Yes. Game. This one's really cool because you get to draw in it. So not a lot of games include art. You'll see on the back of the board you have a um, sheet that you are drawing on. And this one is really interesting that um, it's, a, it's a roll and write game. So you're rolling the dice and then instead of writing numbers or checking out boxes, you're actually drawing parts of a castle. And May likes to predict which number or which symbol she's going to pick, right? Yeah, it's like magic. It's like magic whenever she gets them right. So I actually really like Once Upon a Castle. It doesn't feel like a kid's game. It feels like a real game. So I really like Once Upon a Castle. It's your number nine. Yes. If I was rating my favorite kids' games, it'd probably be higher, but it would definitely be on my list. Number eight. So my number eight is Pandemic. Now, I, at this point, don't own regular Pandemic, so this is just Pandemic the Cure. This is the dice game. I also have a, the Legacy games as well, but this box was smaller, so I grabbed this one. Um, Pandemic is a really popular game. Uh, you're trying to save the world in it. You are, um, there's cubes all over the world that are sh that are like diseases and they're spreading across the world as you draw cards. The diseases spread and get 
harder and harder and you are the different people in the government and helping pe people remove all the cubes and save the world it's a lot of fun it's a cooperative game so everybody's playing together um kind of like um we played a cooperative game the hamster hamster game hamster clam hamster clam that's a cooperative kids game that we've played so this one is cooperative so everybody's playing so you all win or all, all lose it's really exciting it always comes down to the wire for us because we're not that great and we really like it so that's pandemic that um, one actually looks really interesting for me i think it's really cool i think you'll probably like it sometime because you know you'll be able to play with us yeah. also okay and your number eight may is robot turtles robot turtles by think fun um Tell us a little bit about Robot Turtles. What does this game teach you how to do? So it teaches you how to program. Mm -hmm. So like there's little mouths and like bots at um, the gifted center. Mm -hmm. um, and you can like control them. And it does, it do, like does the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so at school when May goes to the gifted center at school, um, she gets to control these little bots, and you do programming. You sometimes sometimes you get to go and you know uh, set up what you yeah. want it to do, and then it does it. And this yeah. is similar where you're going to play the cards, yeah, and then your little robot turtle moves, right? Yep. Bop, bop, yep. Bop, bop. So May really likes science. That's her favorite, <laughs> one of her favorite subjects in school. Yes. So I'm not surprised she likes robot turtles. Um, I often forget about it, but I think it's a really clever game, really interesting, and you can make it harder as the game goes on, right? Because you can yeah. add different, you can add different programs to it to make things a little yeah. harder. Like uh, there's boxes. Yeah. Move around the boxes, melt, yeah. the, melt the ice, things like that. So and, like get the uh, get the um, gems that you go. And then you always want to get the gems in the corner. So Robot Turtles and Pandemic, those are our number eights. Start. This is Dino World. And this is your number seven. Number seven, Dino World. All right. This is another game by Hava. It's in the yellow box. And what are you trying to do in this game? You're trying to get the little dinos. So you, it's like it's like a science game, actually. It, it teaches you how the dinos hunt. Yep. So the bigger dinos eat the smaller dinos. Yeah. Right? And then as you go up to the giant T-Rex, like, it goes by numbers. Yep. So, like, you only get one T-Rex. Mm -hmm. So you get fewer, in the beginning of the game, you're dealt out cards. You get fewer of the bigger dinosaurs and more of the little dinosaurs. And then you're actually going to flick the cards off the box onto the table. And if you land on smaller cards, your dinosaurs eat the smaller cards. And person with the most cards at the end of the game wins. It's a really fun game. I, I really like it. This would probably make my top ten. I really like this one, too. My number seven is Quadropolis. It's a, in a giant box, I can see. Yeah. Bigger than all of my boxes. I yeah, think. your games, use, the games you like usually come in little boxes. This is a bigger box. Yeah. This is Quadropolis uh, by Days of Wonder. came out a number of years ago maybe five or so at this point but it's a city building game you're going to kind of be drafting tiles from a board um and you're putting them on your board you get to score them based off of how you place them so if you put um certain buildings next to each other you score more if you are stacking the um, apartments on top of each other you score more points that way it's really streamlined really quick um really easy to get into, into. i really like quadropolis uh, we play it a lot. What do you think, May? Does it look like fun? Yeah. You think city building would be a fun kind of theme for a game? Yeah. There's a lot of grown-up games about city building. I like city building games. I don't know if there are that many kids' games with city building in them, huh? Yeah, I so. don't think so. No. Maybe what's about a castle counts as one? Sort of. Yeah, it's a castle. I guess you could have replaced the castle with a, um, with a city, they? right? With other buildings? Yeah. So that makes a lot of sense. So yeah, those are our um, number seven, so Quadropolis and Dino World. Number six. My number six is Mummy's Treasure. All right. So what you are trying to do in this game, you're trying to build up, fill up your whole board, and like you like roll mm -hmm. a dice and whatever you, you can roll three times. And see if you can take anything. Yep. 
Yeah, we just covered this one on um, Second Chance Kids Shelf, actually. We just made a video for it yeah. that was just posted. So you guys can check that out. Um, I believe it was maybe posted last week or the week before. You can check out Mummy's Treasure. It's a lot of fun. This one might make my list for favorite kids games, too. I really like it. It's really simple. You roll some dice. Yeah. And if the dice match the symbols on the tiles, you take them. So that's Mummy's Treasure. It's currently for sale in stores as Little Park or Tiny Park, something along those lines. And it's about building a... Um, roller coaster park a theme park so but mummy treasure we have a different theme but it's also cool my number six is carcassonne um may's mom and i rotate through different types of carcassones we've had a bunch over the years this is the one that we've had probably the longest this is south seas just is really pretty and it also includes the um the mechanic of kind of making orders um you hooling like the like the box so in Carcassonne, of course, you're drawing tile, you draw a tile and you add it to the landscape and potentially score points based off of what you play. Um, super easy, super streamlined, super easy to play, especially since it's a really pure tile laying game. There's no board. You just place, pick the tile, place it. It's kind of like Brandon the Brave that we've played. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we used to own my first Carcassonne and that one was fine. Um, there's just not a whole lot of choices for it all the pieces always match together um but in carcassonne it's a little harder to figure out where they go um but we love it it feels like it's you know uh i don't know how to say it but like um i don't know it's not a super cool game anymore but we really like carcassonne it's definitely held up time yeah what do you think yeah. carcassonne cool yeah maybe so that, those were our number six is Carcassonne and Mummy's Treasure. Number five! So, mine is Agricola. This is honestly a game that we've had for a really long time. This is an old edition of it. It doesn't even have the wooden people or animals in it. It is, you know, just cubes and discs and a lot of fun. So this one is actually a farming game, May. And so you are farmers and you're building up your farmhouse oh, yeah. you told me that there's a farm one. yeah so we are farming in it uh you're growing crops you're you know growing animals you're doing all sorts of stuff it is kind of long it's really involved there's a lot of words on the card so i'm not sure when you're going to be able to play this one next may but someday i would love for you to play agricola because we love it we don't play it much since we've had kids because we used to set it up and then just leave it on the table and just play it over and over again but now that we have the kids they get into things like that so not may so much her little brother and sister get into stuff and so we don't play it as much as we used to but we love it agricola is great um it has not been replaced by caverna or any of the other uve games this one is still our favorite may what's your number five my number five is my favorite game i love this game dinosaur tea party is it your favorite game uh, one of her, her favorite yes. games because there's four others that she likes yes. more she's redone her list a couple times but yes. dinosaur tea party i know she really loves yes all right so what do you do in dinosaur tea party so you are trying to guess the dinosaurs so technically it's like guess who it is just and, like guess who and like you're like in this game dinosaurs forget their friends' names. Mm -hmm. And so they have to figure out who their friends are because apparently dinosaurs are very forgetful. Dinosaurs are also very fancy. So how do you have to talk in it, May? You have to talk very such that's, that's I think actually one of the rules. It is one of the rules. I think that's one of May's favorite parts. But we play Dinosaur Tea Party a lot at our house, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah. Like whenever we have three or more because like you it's not a two playing game that's true you it has to have it. more yeah so yeah that's dinosaur tea party by restoration games Never fall! Never fall! all right i seem to really like kind of classic games my next one is ticket to ride this is the 10 year anniversary edition i got this one at used at our game store for a really cheap price because the box is broken I fixed it up. It's great. 
Uh, this one has those cool little painted trains in it. We really like Ticket to Ride. May's played the um, My First Journey Ticket to Ride. Maybe, I'm not sure. I, she has, I've played it with her. She doesn't remember it, but Ticket to Ride is not very difficult. I'm sure May will be able to, we'll play it at some point. Um, the map is a little tricky to read right now for her, but I think generally speaking, Ticket to Ride is such a streamlined and pure game. We've played a bunch of different versions of it. Um, just the regular edition is really what we've stuck with. Um, this, well, the 10-year anniversary edition is the one that we've stuck with over time, but Ticket to Ride's great. Um, we love to play it with my sisters or May's aunts. They love Ticket to Ride. They play it all the time. Um, so yeah, Ticket to Ride. I love it. May, what's yours? My first Stone Age. My first Stone Age. It's like Stone Age, I guess. She's never played Stone Age. I we play Stone Age sometimes, but this one's a lot of fun for kids. It's, yeah, um, it's a kids version. Kids version of Stone Age. <laughs> so you're collecting resources, and what are you trying to do with or the resources? Pieces. In pieces. Yep. To um, so you can buy three houses. Whenever you get three houses, you can get it. Yeah. And. It's just a lot of fun. It's just like other, just like the other Stone Age. Only you're not rolling the dice to um, collect the resources. You're rolling the dice to move around a track, and wherever you land, you get to collect that resource. So, yeah. just this kind of a boiled down version of um, Stone Age, and you're just trying to buy the huts instead of getting the cards. So this one's great. Uh, my first Stone Age. We do play this one a lot, a lot too, huh? Yeah. Great. All right. So those were our number fours. Number three. All right, so my number three game, this one, you, I used to always say this was my favorite game. It just doesn't get played as much, so I've kind of moved it down. But this one is Power Grid. This is, does it look fun? Yeah, kind of. So? I actually thought it said Power Girl, but I actually. Power Girl? <laughs> yeah, or like Girl Power. Girl Power would probably be more fun for you, huh? <laughs> um, so Power Power Grid is um, an economic game. You are building power plants across a map, um, buying up resources, getting power plants, but the resources to power the power plants. It has such a nice kind of arc to it. And I just love that part of the game. Um, you're just kind of jockeying in turn order, jockeying for the, the resources. It's just really fun. Um, power Grid, one of my favorite games. Number three. What's your number three, May? Out box. So your detectives in this one. A fox, like on here, mm -hmm. stole your pie. So the chickens are trying to find it. Kids games have the best themes. That's, yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> the fox stole the pie and the chicken detectives are trying to catch them. Yeah. Right? So yeah. that's really it. It is a deduction game. May really likes deduction games. We also had, what did we have? A dinosaur Tea Party was a deduction game. Um... <laughs> Yeah, in this one. So, um, and you're just trying to collect clues, and the clues are going to tell you um, who, it, which fox stole it, right? Yeah, like so, you can hop around on these little paws here, mm -hmm. and like this, this little thing, and you stick whoever it is, yep. and then whenever it has a green, and then if it's a blink, it doesn't have a green. Yes. Yep. Yeah, it's got this really cool um, decoder um, uh, card thing that's really cool. Um, so it kind of tells you uh, what the answer is without actually telling you. So you got to deduce what it is. So that's Outfox. These are number three games, right? Outfoxed and Power Grid or Power Power Girl. No, go! Number two. My number two game is Space Space. This game just came out last year, and it's probably my most played game since it came out. I love Space Space. I always want to play Space Space. It is such a good game. You are um, in space trying to collect ships um, and dock them along your thing. You are rolling dice. The different uh, docking bays correspond with different dice rolls. When you roll certain numbers, they activate the different bays, and you get to take different actions, giving you points or money or something or some other stuff. So, I love it. Space Base. It's my number two favorite game. It's kind of.
kind of sounds like Star Wars to me. It kind of, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> there's not, there's not really any fighting though. Yeah. So, but um. Yeah, but I'm thinking like the ships. Yeah, yeah it's kind of got that feel. So, mm -hmm. yeah, space, space. May, what is your second favorite game of all time? Junior Wemmy. <laughs> yep, this one is also by Haba. It is a very small box game. It's in their Princess Mara line, so it's a princess game. Um, but the like third or second princess games I have. She has a lot of princess games, but um, yeah. And Junior Rummy, you play it just like Rummy, just like you would with a regular deck of cards. Yeah. Only these have princesses on them, and you're trying to fill up. Yep. Whenever you win a hand, you get a gem for your um for your TR. Yeah. So. Because, like, they're at a tea party and they don't have TRs. Yep. So, May loves this game. I think because it has princesses. That's a big part of it, huh? Yeah. So, she also likes holding, like, you know, you like card games, right? You yeah. like holding the cards. We have little card holders yeah. that are fun, too. But, yeah. So, our second favorite games are Junior Rummy. And Space Blast. Space Base. Number one. You say it after me. So as we were making our lists, um, I showed May my list, and she remembered that she really liked one of the games on my list, and she redid her list. And it turns out that we have, we both have the favorite, the same favorite game. Ready? One, two, three. Baron Park. Baron Park. This is my favorite game. It took a while to kind of come off that Power Grid was my favorite game because I've been playing it and said that it was my favorite game for so long. But I think Baron Park really is my favorite game. Um, what do you like about Baron Park? Why is it your favorite game? The nature of it. Yeah. It? May loves science. <laughs> she loves animals. So building like building a kind of zoo be... is a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love Baron Park. It's a tile land game, but it's also one of those kind of Tetris games. Actually, it's very similar to Mummy's Treasure, huh? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, so, um, but in it, you're trying to fill up your board. I love when tile laying games, you're trying to fill something. You're not just trying to sprawl across something. So that um, is probably my favorite part of it. I love that puzzle part. Um, but yeah. I that... love the science and they are part and building part yeah. of it. Perfect. <laughs> so like technically every part of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you hear the dog walking upstairs? So yeah, our favorite game of all time is, ready? Baron Park. Baron Park. I'm Jordan. I'm May. Thanks for watching our top 10 list. We'll see you next year.